This is Lecture 10D on various parametric curves. Parametric curves can be drawn from equations, and that is what we've done so far. They also can be generated physically by having one geometric shape roll over another. In this case, the rolling curve does not slip or drag, but instead just rolls smoothly over the other curve. In the moving curve, there's a pencil located somewhere along the, the shape, and this pencil traces out a curve. These are the parametric curves we're talking about. The generic name given to all curves traced out in this manner is the roulette. Now there are many classifications and some people use the names for these curves in different manners, but I'm going to suggest a certain taxonomy that will keep these curves straight. This is a fairly standard breakdown. So again, we call the curve that is traced out by having some geometric shapes, such as a circle or a parabola, roll without slipping or dragging over another shape. We call that curve the roulette. Now if one or both of those shapes is a circle, then the roulette is called a trochoid. This is actually should be indented because a trochoid is a special kind of a roulette. Now in these lectures we're going to look at three special kinds of trochoids. The most famous of these is the cycloid. In a cycloid, a circle is rolling along a straight line. Then there's the epicycloid. In this case, a circle is rolling on the outside of another circle. And in the hypocycloid, the moving circle is rolling on the inside of the stationary circle. Notice the prefixes epi and hypo. Epi means on top, as in epidural, and hypo is like hypodermic, meaning beneath. Okay, to trace out these curves, there has to be a pencil. The location of the pencil gives you another subset of these curves. If you have um, if you have the pencil located right in the rim of the moving circle, then the curve see again the color here, then the curve is called the cycloid, the epicycloid, or the hypocycloid. If you take that curve that pencil and instead of having it be on the rim, you move it back in, say you would move it so it's stuck somewhere along a spoke coming out of the radius, coming out of the center. So the pencil is located inside the moving circle. Then the generated curve is called a hmm, it's called a curtate cycloid. This is interesting. My keyboard commands are not working. Here we go. It's called a curtate cycloid or curtate epicycloid or curtate hypocycloid. Again, what happens here is is where you've located the pencil. If you locate it right on the rim, you call it a cycloid. If you pull that pencil back and stick it somewhere along a spoke, then it's called a curtate cycloid. Now if you take the pencil and say you have a spoke out to the rim of your moving circle and you construct an arm that extends beyond it and you locate the pencil out there, then you have a prolate curve. Prolate cycloid, prolate epicycloid, or prolate hypocycloid. That's sort of hypothetical in many situations because you might think that that pencil on the extended arm could get broken off, and it could, but you can still generate the curves this way. In general, those prolate curves will show loops. The cycloid, epicycloid, and hypocycloid, where the pencil's right in the rim, those curves show cusps, and the curtate cycloids tend to be wavy lines. Many of these curves have famous names. And note that it, they don't have to be trochoids. Here's a catenary. We're familiar with that from physics and from algebra. You know, from physics, the catenary is the shape of a wire suspended between two poles when the only force acting on that wire is gravity. It's the shape taken by that wire. The equation, of course, is a scaled hyperbolic cosine curve. But the catenary can be generated physically by having a parabola with a pencil in it rolling along a straight line. Another famous curve is your cardioid. You might be familiar with this if you um, do any work with microphones. For the cardioid microphone, that is the shape of the, of the pickup pattern from certain microphones. The cardioid is a special case of an epicycloid. So you could generate this cardioid shape by having a circle roll on the outside of another circle. And I'll show you some examples now. 
All the examples I'm showing are from MathWorld, from Mathematica on the Internet. You can find other sites, and some of these other sites allow you to cr control the radius of the circle the, um, and the location of the pencil and, and generate the shapes for yourself. But these are all pretty good demonstrations, and they're consistent, so that's why I'm using these ones. So it's http colon slash slash mathworld.wolfram.com. This is your cycloid. Remember, a cycloid is a circle rolling along a straight line. In the cycloid curve, the pencil is located right on the rim of the pencil. This, right on the rim of the circle, the pencil is the red dot. And as the pencil rolls along the straight line, the curve that's traced out is called the cycloid. Here's the curtate cycloid. Now you see that sort of wavy line instead of the cusp that you saw with the cycloid. Here the pencil is located on the in, in the interior of the circle. And as the circle moves, it traces out that wavy line. Of course, if, this, if the um, pencil is located right at the center of the circle, it will trace out a straight line. And here's the prolate cycloid. In this case, the pencil is located uh, on some kind of arm extending beyond the rim of the circle. And now you see the generation of loops. If you want to see how they're um, generated, you can note that this uh, extended pencil overshoots the um, circle. You can see that right here. It sort of overshoots. And then when the circle moves on, it's um, a little further back than what it was on the position where, it, you know, when the circle came to that particular spot. And that's where you get the loops, and that's characteristic of these prolate curves. So those were three, your prolate, your cycloid, and your um, curtate cycloid curve, all caused or created by a circle rolling along a straight line. Now here's your epicycloids. In this case, the circle with the radius B shown on the top rolls along the stationary circle the, rate, uh, the radius of the stationary circle is given by A. P is the location of the pencil that's tracing out the curve. This is a little different situation than you had with the circle rolling along the straight line. As the circle rolls along the straight line, it just keeps rolling and rolling forever. Here, the, um, the location of the rolling circle will repeat itself. So the curve will eventually trace over itself as that circle keeps rolling over and over the, st the stationary circle. Sometimes it takes just one complete revolution around the stationary circle for the curve to retrace itself, and other times it takes several. And that depends on the ratio of these two radii. Also, the type of curve that gets traced out depends on the ratio of the two radii. In the first case, this is shown um, in the second line and the third line, the first case right here. Let me get the pencil, although it stops the animation. This one right here, this is called a cardioid shape mentioned before. This is the shape of of, a, of the pattern generated by some microphones, a pickup pattern of, of certain microphones. You might be familiar with that. And in this case, the ratio of the radius of the inner circle to the radius of the outer circle equals 1. And you can get that idea here in general. So the two, circle ha two circles have the same um, value of radius. And when they rotate, the curve that generated is the cardioid. The next shape in the second uh, here is called a nephroid. It's sort of a kidney shape. And in this case, the stationary circle has a radius of twice the radius of the moving circle. I'll put the pin down now, and you can see the circles moving again. Here's a hypocycloid. The moving circle again has a radius of B. The stationary circle has a radius of A. The pencil is located at the point marked P. But in this case, the moving circle is on the interior of the stationary circle. The shapes also have uh, certain names. Obviously, the first one is a straight line. And that is generated when the 
the stationary circle has a radius that's twice that of the inner circle. The next shape is called a deltoid. Here the radius of the, uh, the ratio of the two radii is three, and then you have the asteroid. Again, you're seeing cusps that's characteristic of these curves. I mentioned with the epicycloid that the curve retraces itself, but it may not do it on the first pass around the stationary curve. And the three figures in the lower part of the slide show you curves that are, are traced, they're retraced, but it takes many rotations of the moving circle in order to generate the pattern. After that, the pattern is traced out over and over again. So I'm talking about here are uh, these these three right here. Okay. So now you're seeing that pattern. Uh, very interesting patterns, but it takes many rotations of the inner circle before the pattern is established. So those are your cycloid, your epicycloid, and your hypocycloid. I did not show you animations for the curtate or the prolate epi or hypocycloids, only for the cycloid itself. Now in the next slide, um, well lectures in this group will generate equations and generate certain properties for the cycloid and also for the epi and the hypocycloid.